One of the reasons that our dharma, Sanatan dharma, survived all the assaults for so many thousands and millions of years is because of one reason. This is my personal opinion. So, it is because it is only in our dharma that we we pray to the woman as uh, goddesses. You know, when the, the woman is, you know, when she is a small girl, we do bala puja. When she is a kanya, we do kanya puja. And then uh, when she is a suvasini, we do suvasini puja. I don't think of there is any other religion that um, uh, allows this or respects this. So ours is the only dharma which respects women and womanhood. So in that regard, we wanted to start this pitham uh, with uh, Pooja Swamiji and Pooja Mataji's uh, guidance. We started this uh, Devi pitham uh, for uh, with a focus on women empowerment and women en enrichment. So this is all for, for women and respecting them. And uh, you know, uh, in in Telugu we say you know to pujinchana one and so puja karne ke liye unke. So. That is the, uh, you know, the vision and the mission of this, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing the, uh, you know, this temple, starting this temple. So let me say a few things about uh, the deities here. Um, the main deity is uh, Lalita Devi, Raja Rajeshwari. She is the divine mother and ultimate mother. And uh, to her right, to her right, not, which is to our left, we see her uh, mantrini, which is Raja Shyamala, Raja Matangi Devi. And then to her left, which is to our right, which is Varahi Devi, who is her uh, commander in chief. So if you really know a little bit about Lalita, Sas, uh, Lalita Devi, she was the, uh, you know, she came to the earth to kill Bhandasura, the evil demon. Um, so to kill him, she is the first one who got all the woman army, and that is called Shakti Sena. So, uh, it's all about woman, one. Then, if you see to the right, you see Kali Devi, um, then um, Pratyangira Devi, and Dumavati. To the left, you see Kshipra Ganapati. Kshipra Ganapati is the Ganapati made out of um, lead. Okay, there is special significance which we will cover sometime in the future. And there is Kal Bhairav, uh, the consort of uh, Kali Devi. And there is Shani Bhagwan. Okay, a lot of people, if you know astrology, out of the 30 year cycle of uh, Shani, 15 years are gone, like Sade Sati, seven and a half years, Astama Shani, Ardhastama Shani, you know, when you look at it all, 15 years out of the 30 year cycle of Shani, you are under the influence of Shani Bhagwan. So he is there. And of course, we have uh, Shirdi Sai Baba. Okay. So, little bit about um, the deities. I don't need to tell a whole lot about uh, Lalita Devi. She is a divine mother. Whatever you ask, you know, she will give us. Let's talk about her, um, you know, um, um, her um, ministers, um, which is Raja Shamala. Raja Shyamala, you know, a lot of people pray to her for career growth, um, upliftment, um, interpersonal relationships and everything, and learning wisdom. So she is in charge of those qualities. So a lot of people, when they come to Pooja Swamiji, Swamiji initiates them with uh, uh, Raja Shyamala Mantra who are struggling with either career uh, progress or finding a job, or you know interpersonal relationships and stuff like that. Uh, so they are initiated with the Raja Shyamala Mantra and uh, they go on, uh, um, you know, do that sadhana and solve their problems. Now coming to Varahi Devi, which we will cover shortly, a little later. So we'll we'll wait we'll wait on her. Let's talk about Kali and Kala Bhairav. So they are in charge of time. If you Kal Bhairav is the you know. Um, you know, if you want to enter Kashi, you need to get Bhairav's uh, permission to enter Kashi. Kali Devi is the Divine Mother. She is in charge of time. In this universe, you can get anything back except time. So that is one of the reasons that uh, she is in charge of time. Pratyangira Devi, she, 
See, all of these people are um, Mahavidyas. There are 10 Mahavidyas, which is the 10 Divine Mothers who came from the, you know, main day, uh, you know, if you look at it, basically they are uh, Raja Shyamala. The 10 Mahavidyas are Raja Shyamala, Shodashi, Kamalatmika, Bhuneshwari, Tara Devi, Bhagala Mukhi, then uh, Dhumavati, um, then uh, uh, Chinnamasta, then uh, Kali Devi, and then uh, Tripura Bhairu. These are the 10 deities, Divine Mothers. And these are all divine um, uh, shaktis. And when you pray to them, you know, a lot of people say, oh, they are all Tivra Devatas. You know, you need to be careful. Um, you know, that's a misnomer. Uh, they are all divine mothers. Do you know any mother getting upset with their children? I don't think so. So, um, if you know how to really do the sa their sadhana, you can do it and get the divine mother's graces. So, uh, talking about um, Pratyangira Devi, a lot of people see her, she is mentioned in Adharvana Veda and uh, the main feature about her is, a lot of people might have heard about black magic or prayogas or something like that, who would do, or Naradishti or Naragosha and stuff like that. She is the best person to repel all those things, like whether it is Naradishti or anything. So people pray to Pratyangira Devi. Now, Dhumavati is a very special uh, divine mother. She is a widow. That's why you see her dressed in uh, red. She is called Uchakana Vidya. So whenever you go to other, any devata, you say divine mother or divine uh, whoever it is, Bhairav, give me this, give me that, I want this, I want that. But when you go to her, she is a Uchakana Vidya. That means you need to ask her, please remove this, please remove this, please remove that. So, for example, please remove anger from me. Please remove these doshas from me. Or please remove that. You should never ask, give me this, give me that. She is the only divine mother that you should ask, please remove this. So, that is called Uchatana Vidya. Kal Bhairav, I don't need to explain. She is the death of God. He is the, you know, um, God of death. Uh, above, um, you know, after death, you know, he is in charge of taking you to... Um, you know, Kailash and others, so other places. Talking about Shaneshwar, I already said, um, um, you know, enough about it. 15 years out of the 30 year cycle, you are under his influence. So every Saturday, we're going to have Kailavishekam, so people can come and uh, do Shani Puja um, on Saturdays and uh, try to be in his good books. He should always be in good books of Shani. Uh, there is a story I want to tell about Shaneshwara. Okay, you know Lord Hanuman. Everybody knows Lord Hanuman, right? So his time of Sade Satikya. Okay, his time of Sade Satikya. So Shani Bhagwan comes to Lord Hanuman and says, Lord Hanuman, you know it's my time. I have to do my job. You know I have a duty to do. You know, but you are the. You know I I pray you as a god myself. Uh, how can I do my job? I need your permission. Please bless me and. Uh, uh, you know, please give me permission to do my job. So Hanumanji sings, you know what? I'm glad he came here. You know, let me see how can I escape this uh, satisfaction. So he says, you know what? I will let you do your um, job, uh, Shani. So what I will do is, I want you to go under this um, mountain, into this cave, and I will tell you when to come out. And then you come out. And then you can do your job. He goes under the uh, into the cave in, under the mountain, and Hanumanji goes and sits on that mount, and he presses him so that you know Shani won't come out of the mount. So he sits there for how long? Seven and a half years. Then he gets up, and Shani Bhagwan comes out, and he says, uh, "Oh, I completely forgot." Uh, but anyway, seven and a half years are over, right? So there is nothing, you know, you can go back. Then, you know what Shani Bhagavan said? Uh, Swami, um, I'm really sorry to bring it to your attention. See, for seven and a half years, I made you sit on that mountain. I did my part. <laughs> so you didn't do anything else other than sit on that mountain. So I did my part. So nobody can escape that sadhisattva. 
All right. So it's very, very important that we pray to Shani Bhagwan, and uh, you know, he can be easily impressed. You know, all goddesses and goddesses can be easily, you know, we can get their place. We just need to figure out, just like, you know, kids are there, and every kid likes something, candy or something like that, and you give it to them, you know, they'll be very nice to us and everything. So we just need to figure out what each deity likes, and just do that, you know, like um, Vishnu. What does he like? Alankara. Alankara. So, Alankara Priyudu, that's what uh, they call. He loves uh, dressing up. So wherever you see Vishnu Bhagwan or Balaji, everybody, they go out of their way to do Alankaras. Shiva, what does he like? Abhishekams. So every time you do, you do, chant Rudram and you do Abhishekam. Ganapati, what does he like? Tarpanas. So you do Tarpan, Ganapati is very happy. So you just figure out what they like and you do it. And it's very easy to get the divine grace, okay? And if you can chant that mantra of that specific uh, um, deity, that gives you immense power. You know, it's like a force multiplier when, you know, a lot of people. A little bit about Swamiji, you know, there is a English saying like, you know, I can catch a fish for you or I can teach you how to fish. So Swamiji's paddhati is to initiate you how to teach you how to fish, okay? For example, if you remember Ramayana, if you remember Ramayana, Dasharatha did not have Putra Yoga in his chart, okay? They tried and they never had children. Then what did he do? You know, they, they he went and told, uh, his uh, Kula Guru was who? Vashishta. Vashishta was a Brahmarshi. So if Brahmarshi, if he blesses, you can have children, it would come true, right? But not everybody has the permission to bless as they wish, okay? So they said, we need to do Putra Kameshti Yajnam. That is the significance of a Yajnam. So, but who would do that Yajnam? Meaning you have a Brahmarshi who is a Kuluguru, he can do it. But did he, who, did he do it? No. Somebody else, he said, that she's a special, special person, special Maharshi. He needs to do it. Then only you will get the prasadam from the Agni Kunda, right? So who was that Rishi, do you know? Rishi Sunga. Okay. So we'll talk about Rishi Sunga some other time. But he was a Upasaka of that Devata Mantra. Who are Upasakas? Somebody who has taken the Mantra initiation from a Siddha Guru and did it until the Devata appeared and blesses them. Those are people who are Upasakas, okay? Swamiji says the same thing. I'll initiate you with a mantra. You do Upasana and you solve your own problems. After your problems are solved, you don't need to even come to me also. That is his way of saying, you know, I'll teach you how to fish rather than I'll catch the fish for you. So millions of people got initiated in a mantra diksha by Swamiji and they are able to solve their problems. So when Rishyasrunga, who is a Upasaka, did that Yajnam, Putra Kamesh Yajnam, you know what happened, you know, the rest is history. So that is what it is all about. Mantra has the Shakti to overcome any yogas that may not be there in your charts. That is the Shakti of the mantra. So, that is what uh, our Swamiji, Mataji, and our Pitam does. We initiate people with Mantra Diksha. They go on to solve their own problems. They can solve their own problems and go on their, uh, you know, go on to do on their, um, you know, spiritual uh, path and attain, uh, you know, spiritual progress. Ready, Andy? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. I hope I didn't bore you. We'll go to the.